Hello and welcome to Red Band Trailer. This is our season finale. It's a beautiful night here at the Tiki Bar. Tonight is a special night because my dear friend Jason Reitman is here. We're going to talk about his movie career and our new movie, Young Adult, and lots of interesting things. And we might even have a musical surprise for you. So stick around. Come inside for a ride. Don't hide. Diablo Cody, welcome to the Red Band trailer. Oh, thank you for having me. Absolutely. Uh, I've been wanting to interview for you for a long time. Well, here we are. Ask me anything. Okay. What was your second tattoo? Oh, okay. Um, my second tattoo, I got two days after 9-11. This is a very personal story. Okay. And I was deeply depressed, and it was raining, and I felt aimless like a lot of people in America. And um, I wanted to get like a a wholesome, like, all-American symbol of happiness tattooed on me, and I had to do it that day. So I went yet. and rode the L to uh, uh, my favorite tattoo place in Chicago, and I got a pinup girl on my leg. No kidding. Yeah. And that made you happy? It made me feel better. <laughs> but Even though it was painful? You know, I don't really think tattoos hurt. You don't have any. No. It's Honestly, it's really not painful. Actually, I have kind of a tattoo. Uh, what's kind of a tattoo? When I was a kid, uh, a buddy of mine stabbed me with a pencil, and the mark stayed. I love that it's still there. Yeah. It's like a very cool... You know what? That's not a tattoo, but I think that's a cool story. I've told you my brother-in-law has some crazy tattoos. Now, this is the guy who's married to... My sister. Which sister? The little one. The little one. Yeah. The guy who's, like, military. Yeah. And he has cool tattoos? Uh, crazy stuff. He's got sleeves. He has two guns pointed to his crotch. He must fit right in with you guys. Yeah, he's a regular Reitman. <laughs> well, you know what? That's actually, that brings me to something I wanted to ask you about. Okay. So, as you know, I grew up in the Midwest. We were inundated with images of L.A. and yeah. Hollywood. We watched Beverly Hills 90210. As did I. I used L.A. Looks hairspray. Didn't. I wore L.A. Gear shoes. Basically, the, the message I was being sent from media was that L.A. and Beverly Hills were the most magical, amazing places in the world. And it worked on you. It, oh, absolutely. It worked. I think it worked on every kid. But you grew up in Beverly Hills. Right. I, what is it like to, I guess you wouldn't know the alternative, but I mean, what is it like to, to live in a place that is sort of upheld by the rest of the country as being just the pinnacle of coolness and success? Honestly, embarrassing. Really? Yeah, I mean, I think my whole childhood when people would ask my zip code, did you really li did you live in 90210? Yes, I would, and you know what I would say even as a kid? Uh 90210. Wow. I was so embarrassed. <laughs> We're city I'm sorry, I think that's awesome. Beverly Hills. Zip code 90210. Like the show. Yes, like the show. Yeah. See whereas like I'm an adult now and like I've I when I was looking at houses, there were times where I considered you know, I was like, I, I just want to live in 90210. <laughs> like, if I can find it, if and I, I can find a place, in and that's a, again. Yeah. Now, do you st are you still embarrassed about your zip code? No, but I, um, uh, I don't know. Maybe I just grew up. I earned the money to buy my house, and maybe that's it. I don't know. It's different. It is. It feels a little bit different. Um, it was more of being embarrassed of being rich than being embarrassed of living in Beverly Hills. Because representations of rich kids in the 80s were always negative. It was like, oh, always the main rich guy. kid is trying to ruin always everybody else's fun guy. in the movie. I mean, I remember actually thinking as a kid, if I ever get to make movies when I'm older, I want to make rich people the good guys and poor people the bad guys. <laughs> and also, I went to a school that was all kind of rich kids, but I was a Hollywood rich kid, so it, it allowed them to still... They could still feel like they were... They'd be like, look, my dad just produces a TV show. Or my dad's, Your dad's my Ivan dad's, Reitman. My dad's just a surgeon. Yeah, know? exactly. Like, like, we're middle class, man. Exactly. Like, it gave them credibi credibility. And exactly. You were, like, if you, the if you were the child of a lawyer or a doctor, you could suddenly be middle class, uh, and they could... Uh, I remember waiting in line for the cafeteria once, and uh, some kid goes, why doesn't your dad just buy the cafeteria? <laughs> Which is so, like, not even funny. No, like, it's, not clever. It's just stupid. <laughs> but it hurt. <laughs> no, that's painful. Yeah. Okay. Um, so here's a factoid that I think is interesting about you. Okay. You 
were always interested in filmmaking and you always kind of knew that you wanted to be a part of the family business. Mm -hmm. But when you went to college, you mm -hmm. majored in pre-med. Mm -hmm. You want to be a doctor? Um, I was scared of being a director. I didn't want to follow in my father's footsteps. I didn't want to be compared to him all the time. I knew that people would... Well, that never happens. Yeah, exactly. I, I didn't want... Uh, I, I knew that I'd be accused of nepotism kind of at every turn. And uh, and that the going presumption is if you're a son of a famous director that you must be a, a talentless, spoiled brat with a drug and alcohol problem. Like, that's the going idea. So why would I enter a job where that was the presumption of who I was? And so I picked the job that no one ever questions like no one ever no one ever wonders why'd you become a doctor yeah it's like doctor really why why would you do that except uh, me right now today <laughs> and uh i want to be a psychologist i want to be a psychiatrist i thought that's well, that's cool yeah i thought I, I, i've always been fascinated by people and um uh i thought that's what i wanted to do and you kind of did yeah i think there is psychology there's a lot of psychology in storytelling uh, both in writing and directing. But uh, finally my father came and visited me and said, what the f*** are you doing? Can we swear in the trailer? Dan says no. So finally my father came and visited me and said, what the heck are you doing? <laughs> That's awesome. Was that a good take Perfect. Was yeah. that a good match? Thanks. All right. It's funny whenever we have, like, <laughs> Jason Bateman was the same way where he, yeah. would, like, he knew how to, because he's directed, he understood when he was in here, like, he would, he would like create edits and stuff for do pickups and stuff yeah that's actually it's funny i find when you work with people who did a lot of television where you do have to work very quickly on the fly um you always have that skill set clooney had that skill set bateman had that skill set where literally just start a line over like just go right back to where it was don't break i mean uh it's an interesting trait in an actor which lets you know a lot about how they work uh like an emotional actor will never do that like Charlize would never do that because she's she's lost. She's in the moment. She's not even thinking about the camera. Bateman is completely aware of the whole crew. Bateman's completely aware that what we're editing, he's thinking about the lines that I'm liking and not liking as he's saying them. And uh, and and George is the same. Sorry. No, that's that's fascinating. I like hearing about that stuff, especially because I'm going to direct and I'm wondering like what kind of actors am I going to How are you feeling? Are you're, you're one, two. You're two and a half months out. I'm close. And how do you feel? I, I feel like an imposter. You know, like, you're so much more prepared to do this now than I was when I made Thank You for Smoking. Other people have said that, but that's not true. You had, been, you had grown up on sets, and you were, I promise you, you had so much more technical knowledge than I do. Um, I don't think it's about technical knowledge, and directing is not about technical knowledge. So many directors have no technical knowledge. I think uh, it's about storytelling, and that is what you have a lot of experience in. We'll see how it goes. And people. I think you're great with people. And working with actors is being good with people. Since you're asking me about directing and mm -hmm. my directorial debut, I'm one. tell me, I didn't know you when you made Thank You for Smoking. Mm. It's the only movie you've made where I didn't know you at the time. Mm. What was your mindset going into that? Were you nervous or were you just more Terrified. Ready? Terrified. I had spent six or seven years making commercials and short films. I had written this screenplay that I... Uh, kind of held tightly like a, you know this kind of holy grail to my career and I, every time another screenplay had been offered I never thought they measured up against my screenplay um, and all of a sudden you know you're you're weeks away from shooting and you you know it's these you know you just start questioning like <laughs> what you know was this the one and why didn't I take one of those other jobs and you know why do I think I know I'm Right. And what am I going to say to these guys? What am I going to say to Robert Duvall? That's how I feel. Like, what am I going to say to Holly Hunter? Like, right. what, what can I what So can here's I what happens. Do? And this is what happens. Right. It's really simple. You're going to say action. And this sounds simplistic. You're going to say action. And then they're going to do a take. And you're going to say cut. And once it's over, it's going to be really obvious what was right and what was wrong. You're going to watch it and you're going to go, God. That's easy for you to no, say no, 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 because no. you have. You, that's why all your movies are good because <laughs> you can tell if something's good or bad. That's no, not just not, a natural you, function. Here, I'm gonna make it even easier. All right. Uh, day before my first day of shooting, my father calls me up, and uh, he says, "Listen, tomorrow, um, don't worry if it's funny. You don't know what's funny. Nobody actually knows what's funny." He wasn't saying you don't know what's funny. He was making yeah. a dick. Um, said your barometer for comedy is nowhere good as good as your barometer for truth so all you should ask yourself as you watch every take is does this feel honest because you know when something is bullshit. so 
that's it. You know, watch Holly Hunter and you're going to say, does that actually feel real or does that feel like acting right now? And the question then is what you do with that information. And you're going to have to learn how to talk to her. And every actor is different. The only thing that's important is to get the footage. Do you enjoy manipulating the audience's emotions? That's the whole job. I that's, mean, that's what I think, too. The joy of the job yeah. is, I mean, and your, your ability as a director is completely tied to your ability to manipulate actors and then manipulate the audience. No, I feel the same way. It's, uh, that's the, the fun part about the Well, job. that's the joy of storytelling. I mean, that's the joy of telling a joke. Yeah, it's just bring waiting for the reaction in. and bring creating somebody suspense. In. Well, I feel like there's this quote that you constantly hear from writers. It's a Dorothy Parker quote. You know, I I hate writing. I love having written. <laughs> I've never agreed with it, and I know most writers relate to it. I actually love writing. I'm I'm sad to be done. I like the good moments. There's a lot yeah. of hard moments. No, there are moments where you're like, okay, I I I wish I was writing this instead of that. But, but when you get to those scenes that you've been waiting for, yeah. like that, that's fun. I, remember, I wrote the the wedding sequence in Up in the Air is like 16 or 17 pages, and I wrote it in one day. I remember, I remember bef that. right before you wrote it, I remember talking to you and you mm -hmm. saying, I'm going to go write this wedding sequence. Yeah. And it was great, right? That was a magical experience. And it, all kinds of dialogue was coming to me in the moment, and I just knew it. Um, and when you're doing that, um, that's the only time, and you know me, I'm, I'm not a spiritual person, but the only time I ever feel that kind of feeling is when I'm writing, and it feels like I couldn't possibly be coming up with this stuff. That's what Quentin Tarantino calls it, the antenna to God. Hmm. Um, do you want to maybe, like, go do something else? <laughs> That's a great idea. What do you have in mind? Jason, you brought your guitar. Oh, this? Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. I think it's kind of nice. We're sitting out here by the tiki bar. The fire is going. Maybe we should do a song. I think that's a good idea. Let's okay. see. Maybe you can come in on something. Okay. All right. <laughs> well, it ain't no use to sit and wonder why, babe. If you don't know by now. And it ain't no use to sit and wonder why, babe. It don't matter anyhow. When your rooster crows at the break of dawn, look out your window and I'll be gone. You're the reason I'm traveling on. Don't think twice, it's all right. Well, it ain't no use in turning light that I never know and it ain't no use in turning on your light babe I'm on the dark side of the road so I wish there was something I could do or say to make you change your mind and stay we never did too much talking anyway don't think twice it's all right well it ain't no use in calling out my name girl like you never did before it ain't no use in calling out my name girl i can't hear you anymore i'm thinking and wondering all the way down the road once loved a woman a child, I am told. I gave her my heart. I gave her my soul. Don't think twice, it's all right. Well, I'm no singer, but I thought that was pretty fun. And I hope you did too. Thank you for joining us this season on Red Band Trailer. We had a great time, and I hope you did too. What do you think, Patsy? Did we have a good season? And he's just in a bad mood because we haven't had sex in days. Anyway, thank you so much for joining us this season. Take care of yourself. And as always, it's not your fault. You could have done better, but I don't mind. You just kind of wasted my precious time. Don't think twice, it's all right. Thank you for joining us today in the Red Band trailer. Jason Brightman.